Ron Hovsepian. Before we talk about deals in the second half, I want to talk about Intralink's second quarter earnings, which just came out this week. Revenue's up 9%. You beat on the top and bottom lines. So how'd you do it? Yeah, we really had great success in both of our major lines of business. One is on the mergers and acquisition side of the business, our M&A piece. But what we're really seeing is really good growth inside and adoption of our enterprise business, which is really starting to show some good growth. We saw growth around 14% in that business. So we're really pleased to see the performance of that new line of business. All right, now let's talk about deals. Your deal flow predictor, which just came out, says deals are going to be up 8% in the second half of 2015. Yep. So talk about the methodology behind this index. Yeah, it's really interesting. What we've been able to do because we're the market share leader in the M&A world, Interlinks has been able to create the deal flow predictor. And the DFP, what it does is it's collecting the data as the deals are happening real time before they're announced. So because we have so much market share, we see the market before it actually happens. We've now aggregated that data, taken away all the names, aggregated into markets, geographic and some vertical, and we're able to predict what the next six months roughly look like in the market and, and beyond. And that's really what the deal flow predictor does. And overall, it says deals are going to be up 11% in 2015 as opposed to 2014. So talk about the forces driving this deal flow. Yeah, as you can imagine, there's really two big factors that drive the deal flow. One is the overall environment for, for borrowing and the cash balances on the, on the corporate enterprises balance sheets. You've got a lot of cash sitting out there. The second part of it is we're all driving for revenue growth. And you want to get as much of it as you can organically, but some of it's going to come from inorganic. And that's really what's behind it, the intersection of those two uh, events, the, the amount of capital in the market, and then the need to continue to grow your organization's revenue. And which sectors are going to be strongest when it comes to M&A in the months going forward? Because a lot of investors out there want to know. Yeah. Surprisingly, or not surprisingly, high tech. So high tech will continue to see its growth. What we also see over the coming months is heavy in, uh, entertainment, media, uh, consumer, and retail are the real big ones that we see. And what about the weakest M&A plays? It's a great question. What we see, Greg, in that space is we really see the folks over in mining and in some of the industrial sectors as well as some oil and gas slowing down. Now the DFP, mm -hmm. the deal flow predictor, yes. says that Asia Pacific is going to be up 16 percent, one of the strongest regions according to the survey. Um, do you expect that the volatility we're seeing right now in China will increase or decrease the deal flow going forward? It's a really good question. As you know, Asia is a very complex region and it's made up of a whole bunch of pieces of individual countries. The good news that we're seeing is countries like Japan and others are really going to continue to prosper as well as Southeast Asia. So we do see continued good growth inside of there. It does put an overcast on it, but what we see in our current pipe through the deal flow predictor, uh, we really see it continuing at that 16% and good growth in the other geographies around 10%. All right. Thanks a lot, Ron. Great. Thanks, Greg. Really appreciate it. And thank you for watching The Street.